dear students welcome to a complex chapter of the female genital tract and the breast these chapters being in the latter half of the book tend to be omitted by the students or poorly attended to and sometimes we do pay the penalty for these in the examination let us be a little more cautious because these are also important in the university remember iq is equal to uq rats and pathology this particular picture i had designed not to alarm you but to alert all of us a quote that i picked up last night if we do what we do without panicking we can accomplish great things and i am sure you people are going to accomplish great things see this case history a 46 year old female incidentally noticed a painless nodule in her left breast it gradually increased in size her family doctor observed dimpling of the skin and also the nipple was retracted a set of investigations were asked for and a diagnosis arrived at anyway what is your diagnosis discuss the etiology morphology and microscopy of this disease add a note on the investigations and complications and the methods of assessing and treating this particular case substantiate your answer with diagrams and tabular columns this is so very long because it has been repeatedly asked as an essay and the students were bewildered with it i'm sure you people will be knowing the diagnosis by now if not this is a clue look at this one i am finding multiple areas of dimpling in the skin that is overlying there is a retraction of the nipple this is called a puce orange or an orange skin like appearance if you are not clear about it still there is an altered x ray called the mammogram that is showing a nodule yes please your diagnosis is carcinoma of the breast i had pertinently divided into it into two parts the part one i shall be dealing with it now and part two shortly please do not omit any one because both are essential for you to complete and by the by it is an essay a short essay short note viva voce specimen mcq short case in surgery pathology and also the questions have been asked in surgery any number of times just listen to what i am saying this is the structure of the breast when i say breast itself it is composed of multiple units and each unit is made up of a duct a terminal ductule and then the lobule this is independent of the others and finally through the lactiferous sinus or opening it delivers its secretion here i find a group of acini or alveoli producing a grape like structure and there is a terminal duct this we should be remembering so this is a duct from which we can get ductal malignancy this is a lobule from which we can get lobular malignancy these two things please do remember and again a summary of what i had said there will be about 15 to 20 units the duct terminal duct and the lobule lactiferous sinus the nipple and areola coming to the epidemiology 
for the sake of completion more common in americans and ashkenazi jews and it is one of the most common female cancers in india the cancer of the breast and the cervix account for more than 40 to 50% of the female malignancy age is predominantly perimenopausal or postmenopausal very rare before 30 years of age etiology this is part of an essay question and i had intentionally divided into three subheadings think of the subheading the subheading will take you to the answer one is genetic when we say genetic what are the reasons there is a family history a sibling or a parent could have had secondly there are some genes which are affected by it we call it as a braca gene b r c a gene 1 and 2 this is located in the long arm of chromosome 17 and basically it instructs the protein production for tumor suppression the duties of these is basically tumor suppression and when these are defective there will be malignancy similarly there is a p53 a tumor suppressor gene in our body and when it undergoes mutation there is no tumor suppression it will lead to malignancy in short all of these will be having a defect in dna repair leading to malignancy and it is called brca because it is a breast cancer gene the second one will be a list of hormonal factors how do i say that hormones are involved you find that basically there can be increased amount of estrogen in the patient or there can be increased hormone receptor secondly the breast cancer is more common in nulliparous women than oviparous nulliparous is a woman who is not married or delivered sometimes there is a late first child almost similar to a nulliparous so that can be a possibility a long reproductive life early menarche late menopause so continuous hormonal stimulation so all of these patients have got and hence we say that hormones have got a role it was suspected that exogenous estrogen such as ocp or a contraceptive pill may lead to malignancy but then these are well balanced seeing that there is no excess of any of the hormones so it is placed under question it is doubtful one important thing that we will have to remember will be the functional ovarian tumor some ovarian tumors also produce hormone gct what is gct it is not giant cell tumor it is granulosa cell tumor of the ovary it will produce estrogen and the patient can have a subsequent ovarian as well as the breast malignancy and there are some important precursor lesions or coexisting lesions proliferative breast diseases i shall be dealing with it later of this epithelial hyperplasia with atp can lead to carcinoma of the breast sometimes a carcinoma of the contralateral breast can also pave way to the other breast malignancy endometrial hyperplasia is again because of hyperestrogenism and some patients have got both the endometrial hyperplasia and later on breast cancer so please remember these hormonal factors the third one will be the list of other causes not of great importance but we should write these in our answer obesity fatty diet alcohol intake radiation paradoxically and pathetically you find that the patient is already having a tumor such as a hodgkin's lymphoma and when she undergoes the radiotherapy she may develop 
the cost from of the bread agricultural pesticide we are not going to consume the pesticide but then there are the crops grown in that and then there will be the cattle grazing on it and these cattle deliver the milk and when the lady consumes it subsequently put, putting everything together that can be a malignant this is what we had seen earlier common in america as soon as it is and low in countries such as japan the geographic distribution i picked up this mnemonic not a bad one cancer risk can be assessed by history alone h history a family history or a previous episode alone a for abortion age l for late menopause o for obesity n for nulliparity and e for early menarche this is a mnemonic i picked up from this you people can have a reference yet another one this is a mouse that is having a tumor and sometimes it can be vertically transmitted means from the mother to the child this is called as a mouse mammary tumor virus in which there is a vertical transmission of malignancy so otherwise it is called as a bitness milk virus however it is said that in humans it is not so very important yet from the examination it is important i would like you people to kindly apply this diagram this we had seen earlier the duct ductules and the acne or the alveoli the same thing over here and this is the histological counterpart look at this one it is a duct that we are seeing and it is supported by a stroma fibrocollagenous tissue and these are the glands of the acne please remember this because subsequently you will be seeing what changes are seen in the malignant classification is an aid to orderly thinking and classification of breast cancer breast tumors is different breast cancer is different it is a malignancy so in this basically there is what is called as a non invasive malignancy and an invasive malignancy a non invasive or non infiltrating is again divided into intraductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma in situ in situ means in position so basically intraductal lobular remember these two words then it happens to be invasive invasive ductal invasive lobular and there is a list of variants of the in invasive ductal carcinoma these tumors you people should know the name the invasive ductal carcinoma is again divided into the medullary carcinoma colloid carcinoma tubular carcinoma adenoid cystic carcinoma papillary carcinoma these are all variants of invasive ductal or infiltrating ductal carcinoma to this we should add what is called as a paget species i was surprised because some of the universities had asked paget's disease of the breast as a question it is a little too much but then this please by heart this list and lend me your ears to my description always there should be a gross description when i say a gross picture these are the two patterns which we can see or two variations we can see i'll start with the right picture first this gray white lesion is a tumor it is a little small but then there is a lot of radiating scars and a puckering of the skin or a pulling down of the skin the nipple and areola are also retracted and if you observe carefully the tumor is also below the cut surface in this one i find that the tumor is large bulging grayish white soft and this is 
called the medullary carcinoma because it resembles the medulla oblongata of the brain it bulges above the cut surface and on the surface also i am finding that there are some vacillation or protrusions the same thing i had described in detail i would like you people to write this the carcinoma can vary from a few to several centimeters the overlying skin shows a few the orange or an orange skin like appearance there may be nipple of the retraction of the nipple or areola in large tumors there is a vacillation or even ulceration of the overlying skin generally a malignancy has got a restriction in mobility due to fixation to the underlying fibrous or the muscular tissue the variant i had shown you earlier skirus carcinoma comes from the greek word skirus meaning hard it is small 2 to 3 cm sometimes it has got a gritty and a cartilage like consistency the cut surface showing radial contraction of the surrounding tissue and the tumor is below the plane of the cut surface on the contrary the medullary carcinoma which is also an infiltrating ductal carcinoma you find it is large grayish white fleshy resembling the medulla bulging above the cut surface well demarcated and lobulated another tumor is the lobular carcinoma which is multicentric and bilateral with no specific features these three things we shall remember so this is the first half that i had covered in the breast this will be continued and i would like you people to pay attention to both gracias